everyone, how's it going? I hope you are well. So this is the second part of a two-part video series where we talk about internships with my friend Kelsey. Um, Kelsey, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Kelsey. I make a channel called Kelsey Makes Things on which I make things with code. I make videos about my life at college and new grad life in the near future. And yeah, if you're interested, check it out. Yeah, there will be a link to her channel in the description box down below. So like I said, this is the second part of a two part series around internships. The first part was around why are internships important? What are some of the things that you can get from an internship? So if you are asking those questions right now, then go click the link in the card right there and there will also be a link to the video in the description box down below. But <laughs> So this video is going to talk more about the how to actually get an internship. Kelsey has a lot of experience with this because she's a college student right now. I haven't gotten an internship in a while. And so it's great to have her here to talk about her own experiences and what she thinks is really important right now in 2019 to get an internship. A slight disclaimer, I feel like I'm not like necessarily the best source on how to get an internship. I didn't have like 10 internships. I didn't study obsessively for the interviews for eight hours straight every day. Um, I'm not like that. This video isn't going to be like that. We're gonna talk about some points that may be obvious to people working in tech now, but may not be obvious to people who are just getting into it. Yeah, because I think honestly 10, 10 internships is actually kind of unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, is that there's so many different ways to get into the industry. And we have had two very different ways of getting to where we are. And we just wanna offer that up. We want everyone to know that there are so many ways of getting into the tech industry that you don't necessarily have to even have had an internship at one of the fan companies. I know I didn't. Sure, the game is different now, and I think that some of the tips that we're going to talk about today will be really helpful. But there is a way to navigate this industry that feels authentic to you, that feels reachable and doable, and I want to talk about that more on my channel. So I'm super glad and excited to be talking about this today. So to set the stage a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about the interviews for internships and kind of just talk about what it's like today. What is the game right now? Um, Kelsey, what do you think? Yeah, when you said the game, I was like, I feel that mm. viscerally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, it is a game. Um, and I think that people who don't try to play this game, people who might not study for technical interviews, maybe you'll be super lucky and you'll just happen to be really good at that. But for the great majority of people, that is not the case. Everyone plays this game to some extent. In fact, there's an industry made out of preparing for technical interviews. Oh, totally. Sometimes traditional technical interviews where they ask you the algorithms questions in a time-limited setting. Sometimes these are not great indicators of how good you are as an engineer. On the most basic level, these are supposed to be an indication of your engineering ability and your potential, but sometimes this game will be unfair to people who maybe just didn't know that they had to practice as much. Um, people learn. Um, I definitely learned. Um, I remember my first technical interview mm -hmm. um, where it was on the phone. I was sitting on my bed. I remember this so well because it was so traumatic. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I was asked to like re reverse a stack or something without using ex external data structures. And I had, I kind of just froze. I started talking about FIFO, LIFO, <laughs> what a stack was, what a queue was. I was, I was just kind of spewing information because I just didn't know how to approach this situation. Of course, I learned a little bit more throughout the years, but at that moment, I felt like a failure. And I was like, do I, will I ever get a job? Mm -hmm. um, and that was just so demoralizing. But had I known that it is such a game back then, I don't think I would have felt the same way. And I think I would have approached it a little bit differently. A lot of these internship interviews, like you said, are algorithmic, they're traditional technical interview questions. But then when you get to the internship, they're like, make mistakes, learn a lot of things. Like you're gonna be great. Having been on the industry side for a little while now, I'm noticing it's just like companies have a really hard time assessing who's right for a job. And the technical interview is really common. Um, it works sort of well. Uh, it's definitely broken, but that's kind of the best that they've got for now. So it's kind of this weird, like, this is the best that we've got, I'm sorry, and once you're here, yay, we love to have you. And it's definitely not perfect, and I think that's maybe an important thing to know when you are doing these interviews for internships, that the companies aren't perfect, the interviews aren't perfect, and also you're not perfect. Uh, and we're all just trying to get better and improve ourselves and learn new skills and figure out where do we fit in yeah. this world. 
that's a hard ass question to <laughs> answer. <laughs> But we're trying our best. Um, and I think that if we can all just kind of talk about it openly and help each other move through this, then it gets a little bit easier. So now we're going to get into what are our tips for getting internships? That kind of rhymes. <laughs> what totally are our tips rhymes. for getting internships? <laughs> yeah. So the first thing before you get interviewed is you have to get the interview. Um, and it's so hard. It's it very is. hard. One of the first things that people will talk about is make sure your resume is up to date. So I was always wondering, what does that mean? How do I have an up to date and a good resume, especially if I have not much to put on it? So I think on your resume, you want to focus on your strengths. If you've worked on some personal projects that you think would be cool to talk about, but you don't have much industry experience, definitely focus on your projects. If you have a good GPA, put it on your resume. One thing that really helped me when I was in college was getting friends to review my resume because also at a certain point you kind of lose yourself in the resume and you're like, I don't know if this sounds good or not. Yeah. Um, and getting someone else's perspective, especially a friend, especially if they've had internships before and might know how to cater that resume to a company or mm -hmm. to a specific person. Um, if you can get like professors to look at your resume, the more eyes you can get on your resume, the more polished it can be. And that can be really helpful just to get some more feedback. There's so many resources online around how to build a good resume as well. And we can't cover that in this video here today, but we will leave some resources in the description box down below. So be sure to check those out. So now that you have your resume, how do you apply for jobs? The first thing that I would say is start applying as early as you can. Starting to apply in the fall before the summer of the internship is when a lot of these big employers are looking for interns. And so definitely getting the timing right there and getting in early um, is going to be important. Oftentimes, smaller companies though will recruit a little later because they don't have quotas of the number of interns. They don't. They might not even have an intern program set up. Even if you're getting into the game a little bit later, there are definitely still possibilities for you to get an internship. Mm -hmm. Another thing to know, especially as you're starting to apply to these internships, is that online portals and career fairs are going to feel like black holes. You can spend so much time in them. Uh, they're also very exhausting. And you're going to look at a lot of internship postings um, and it can be entirely overwhelming. In fact, I remember a time in probably my freshman year where I was applying to five jobs a day. I set a minimum for myself, like you must be applying to five jobs every day. Um, and this was completely ineffective. I remember seeing those charts where people list out the number of companies they applied to and the number of interviews they got and how many they passed. I was convinced that this was purely a numbers game. If I applied to enough, I would be guaranteed an internship. Mm -hmm. This is not true. This mentality, in fact, was super inefficient. And I think there are some better ways that I could have approached that. Because likely if you are applying to 20 jobs and no one's accepting you, <laughs> then there's something going there's on there. Yeah. yeah, that like you don't talk to a human being a lot of the times if you're doing it through online portals. Mm -hmm. And job fairs are also overwhelming because recruiters are talking to hundreds of students every day mm -hmm. that they can't give you feedback. And so we're going to offer a couple of other options for what are better ways to look for internships. So the alternative that we think is actually way more efficient is finding contacts and building relationships with people at the companies that you want to intern at. At the end of the day, creating connections and establishing relationships are going to make it way easier for you to get your foot in the door to get considered for the internship because people know people. It's a lot easier for people to think about other people for internships than thousands of resumes. Mm -hmm. So you can do this through cold emailing and LinkedIn messaging to people who are recruiters or engineers or anyone that you find at these companies. And you can also go to meetups and other things to just like get to know some people too. And that's actually how I got my first internship. I had a friend who was two years older than me who just graduated um, and was working for a company that I wanted an internship at. So I asked him, hey, can you refer me? And he got me in the door um, and that's actually where I got my internship. And that was great because I knew someone who was in the company who could vouch for me um, to get me into the program. And that was the most best thing that I could have done uh, in order to get that first internship. So now that we talked about how to prepare for applying and then also applying for internships, now, how do you prepare for an interview when you get that interview for an internship? So we talked about how 
getting an internship is kind of like a game, but if you want to play the game well, you need to practice. Even though it might be hard, you might feel like the problems are super, super difficult and maybe impossible at the beginning. Know that you will get better. I would say it's kind of hard to cram technical interview practice. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do think this is something that you need to improve on, try to find ways that are more efficient for practicing. For example, I personally try not to spend more than an hour or an hour and a half on any single problem. I know that like once I reach a certain point and I can't go any further, then I'm just, I'm just stuck. Um, and so in that case, looking at the solution will help inform me, will help teach me better than aimlessly hammering at the problem for another two hours and getting increasingly more frustrated. Yeah, and it's a lot around like, simulating very similar circumstances. So you're likely only gonna have an hour to do a problem when actually in the interview. Simulating it in terms of like doing it with another person, having a friend be the, play the role of the interviewer so that you can be the interviewee and practice talking through problems and talking through your thoughts. I actually made a video about this a while ago, so please check that out. I think it was how to prepare for technical interviews, which also has a lot of <laughs> great content. It's a very important part of just interviewing in general for both internships and full-time roles. It's unfortunate a little bit that it's kind of like performing, um, like for a match, literally, mm -hmm. and you can't, like Kelsey said, you can't cram for that. Um, but that is the nature of current interviewing standards in the tech industry. Um, so yeah, def definitely practice. Don't procrastinate on this one. Part of the interview will be non-technical as well. So for this portion, what I found really helpful is knowing a project or two, a software project that you can talk about in depth. Be ready for the interviewer to ask a lot of questions about this. Sometimes they'll surprise you with things that you might have not thought about before, but they're trying to get an insight into how you think about these technical problems mm -hmm. and how you build things. I've also definitely been bit by like, I think I know a technical project pretty well, but then when I also try to talk about it, I can't. Mm -hmm. So this is even something that's really worth practicing to remember like how that project went and what the technical details were because memories are faulty and you might not be able to talk about it unless you give yourself a little bit of a refresher. Mm -hmm. So definitely even studying up on like your past history, if you will, uh, is, is really helpful. Usually at the end of the interview, the interviewer will give you a chance to ask questions. This is also an important part of the interview. Something helpful for me is always having a list of questions in mind. These can be company specific, maybe about specific teams at the company or products, or these can be more general questions, things like, what has been the most interesting technical challenge you faced recently? Mm -hmm. um, questions like that. Yeah, and as we talked about in the first video of this series, Internships are a great way to get to know who you are. And so you asking the right questions to a company to help you get some more information around the company culture, the tech stack, the people, is going to give you a lot of information so that you can make the right decision for whether this internship is going to give you what you need to improve yourself, to learn more about yourself, whatever that thing may be. I actually came across a really good resource, which was a GitHub project with a bunch of really good questions you can ask a company. Um, and this is both for internships and for full-time roles. So I'll leave a link for that in the description box down below as well. So during the interview itself, you might be super intimidated um, or scared. I know I've definitely had interviews where I felt that way. Something that might be reassuring is that the interviewer is on your side. Mm -hmm. um, Usually. Usually. <laughs> yeah. Usually the interviewer has used the same question many times, so they kind of know the tips and tricks that can help you get to a solution. Sometimes they'll hint things, so try to pick up on that. Maybe they'll even highlight lines of code that you need to fix. Um, simple things like that that can help you move along. If you're at a place where you're kind of frozen, what's often helpful is to start with the simplest solution. Mm -hmm. Just getting some code written, getting something down makes me feel better and that could work for you as well. Yeah, it's easier to iterate on something than to have something from, or to create something from scratch. The whole like interviewers on your side thing is actually really interesting because I've definitely had interviewers who nudge me towards the right direction because they want to unblock me to see what where my strengths are. Mm -hmm. So definitely they will help you along. And then also like they've been in your shoes before. They've interviewed for that job, they've interviewed for an internship, and they must know how you're feeling. And 
hopefully they can empathize with you and also help you along as well. They're not scary people, they're just human beings. Also, if you're in that position where you feel super stressed and anxious about the interview, just know that every interview is an opportunity to practice. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't advance to the next round, if you don't get the job, if you treat it like an experience to learn rather than a means to an end, mm -hmm. that will sometimes help take the stress off. Totally. Yeah, if you think about it, if, if you think about it in terms of this is the only thing that if, matters. Yeah, that matters, <laughs> then that is very stressful. Yeah. And having that learning mentality is mm -hmm. definitely way easier to get through because even if you know you failed, you'll know how you failed and you mm -hmm. can improve on it the next time. Something that's often overlooked too is that you should be courteous to your interviewer, to your recruiter. You definitely don't want to be burning bridges, especially early on. Um, treat them like you would a normal human being. Sending thank you notes, asking for feedback on what you could be doing better um, is really, is a good thing. It's a courteous and sometimes you won't get responses back and that's okay, mm -hmm. but if you can get responses back, that's really good because then you can take that feedback um, and do better next time and learn from that. So right now, I've only had opportunities to be interviewed, but I know, Mayuko, you've interviewed people. Mm -hmm, you've mm -hmm. been on the other side. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, a lot of these things are true as well. When I'm interviewing someone, I definitely want to say yes to somebody instead of no. And so, like I mentioned before, like getting them to the point where they are thriving in the technical interview, um, being able to assess out their strengths and their weaknesses are the things that I'm looking for. And I know that it's stressful. And so I, I, like, I personally go above and beyond be like hey you're doing fine like it's okay um to make sure that they're doing all right because like technical interviews are not always super fun to even conduct because it's really hard to assess someone's abilities based on a one hour problem but we're doing our best to pick up on certain things based on implementation based on communication style um and hopefully that helps too for anyone who's out there who's interviewing right now that uh, it's it's kind of like it's hard for everybody <laughs> and we're all really just trying our best to communicate to each other what we're good at we're all in this together we're all in this again so again getting an internship is not the end-all be-all getting an internship is not equal to success and not getting an internship is not equal to failure yeah and when I think about a lot of the people who I've worked with as a software engineer a lot of them didn't go to college, a lot of them don't have CS degrees, and they definitely don't have internship experience. But they found their way into the industry because there are a lot of ways to get here. Internships are a great playground and a great opportunity if you have it and if you can to experience a lot of different things and learn a lot about yourself and learn new skills. So hopefully the tips in this video will help you with that. So we hope you liked this video. The first video of the series was around why are internships important. So definitely please check that out and also check out Kelsey's channel, which is uh, linked in the description box down below. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to click subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. oh, we did it! Oh, did oh, it. My, oh my god! Oh my god, my hands are sweaty! <laughs> How to yeet that yo tia. Wait, what? <laughs> yeet that yo tia? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Who am I? Who are you? <laughs> I don't even know. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, no, oh, okay, I'm just sure. Yeah. <laughs> and. Hello. Hi! <laughs> What's the news? Next up, how's the weather? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Where is the car? Somewhere near? Over there or over there. Don't forget to hit eh, the. Uh, uh, okay. And the. Internship, internship, internship. Okay. You did it. Woo!